Welcome back. Uh, well, uh, uh, counting down to the budget, also just uh, take a look at the SGX Nifty. Remember yesterday we had a 200 point, nearly 200 point Nifty rally which took us back to 10,830 and this morning the SGX is indicating that we'll have another 40-50 points added to that. Of course, it's the start of a new series as well. Uh, uh, so, how's the market position and what are market's expectations? Arvind Sangar, Managing Partner of Geosphere Capital Management now joins us. Uh, Arvind, good morning. Thanks a lot for joining us on this big day. Now, the market goes into budget uh, with muted expectations. Uh, we have underperformed uh, this, this month. Uh, the the mid-caps have fallen apart. Uh, your thoughts on whether the budget could do something to cheer up the market? Well, I think anything that the budget does will be, in my opinion, temporary because at the end of the day, this is really more an interim budget than uh, any, any final picture because whatever new government comes in, uh, you know, we'll have a chance to revisit and uh, revise whatever comes out now. So I think this is more an election budget, and election budgets are not traditionally known for have being big, sustainable market movers. You may get a one-day move up or down, but I think there are other things that are bigger issues for the market uh, than, uh, you know, kind of the... Uh, fiscal discipline uh, or the populism or the, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, farm or other uh, rural benefits that are doled out. I think some of those things are kind of expected, some of the fudging of the books uh, every government does before an election. So that's expected. Uh, so I think all of that will be taken with uh, somewhat of a grain of salt. But if the budget is, you know, uh, somewhat hugely, uh, you know, dangerous in terms of fiscal discipline being let go, which I doubt it'll be. If there's something that could cause a negative surprise that's more likely. Uh, I think on the positive side, there's only so much that the government can do, uh, given the tight fiscal constraints. Uh, Actually, that was my follow-up question. Uh, you think there could be anything that could derate the market? Uh, I, I, and you said about negative surprise, but will that be enough to sort of, uh, uh, you know, completely derate the market between now and the, and the general elections? I don't think so. I think it'll, all it'll show is maybe a little bit additional uh, if the if the budget is more populist than what uh, most of us are expecting, uh, some populism. But if it's more than that, it'll be a modest additional headwind. Uh, but there are other global cues, uh, domestic growth cues, and election uncertainty that I think are much bigger issues than uh, how much, uh, you know, populism uh, is uh, brought about by the government over the next three months leading up to the election. So how are you feeling, Arvind, about the domestic queue since you say that the elections won't be such a big trigger for the market? We've got some really good numbers from the likes of Axis Bank, ICICI Bank. In fact, there was huge delivery-based buying from the foreign investors yesterday as well. Are you a little more hopeful now compared to when we spoke last? Well, I mean, I think, uh, you know, markets globally have uh, had a bit of a revival and India has had a bit of a revival too. Uh, but I think India, uh, uh, you know, global uh, uh, issues remain uncertain. Uh, the China-U.S. trade talks, you know, uh, there, there is some signs of progress, but there's a strong possibility that there'll be no deal between now and the end of February. Uh, and if that happens, then do the, you know, the, do the tariffs spring in uh, March 1? That's, that's a potential headwind for, you know, global markets in India could get caught up in that. The good news is that the Fed has given a very dovish signal. So that is good for emerging markets, and that should be helpful for India. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, if the government keeps uh, its, uh, you know, side of not being too indisciplined, then RBI can help in terms of uh, rate cuts. So I think those are some of the positive cues. Uh, you're right that some of the banks have shown good numbers, but, you know, we've seen some uh, disappointing earnings in some other sectors. So I think that uh, the, uh, the recent data series that we saw from uh, auto sales, uh, uh, CV sales, uh, air passenger traffic and others, <laughs> excuse me, which showed somewhat disappointing uh, uh, December numbers. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we start to see some reversal there and that'll help the market. Mm. But I think the big elephant in the room is, uh, is obviously political uncertainty. So that's going to keep the market somewhat range bound. You know, Arvind, there's another kind of uncertainty. And I, don't, I just want to check with you if that has reached foreign shores. Uh, yesterday, the government, uh, the CSO, revised the FY17, the demonetization year GDP, to 8.2%. It's the highest in 10 years uh, GDP number. The uh, FY18 number has been revised from 67 to 7.2%. Two members of the 
uh, apex statistical body, National Statistical Commission, have resigned in protest that they were not consulted when the back series was uh, framed. Uh, an unemployment report was not made public, which the uh, uh, senior members had vetted. Uh, is there a credibility issue of numbers? Uh, unfortunately, it seems like uh, that's, uh, that's uh, clearly something to be concerned about, which is why uh, we are finding that the government official statistics are becoming less useful uh, than looking at some of the data that I just spoke about, which are showing industry trends. And to us, those are much more important than uh, whatever GDP number gets printed by the government. And frankly, you know, I, I would suggest economists need to take a harder look at the official uh, uh, deficit number uh, because there's a lot of off balance sheet, you know, and, and again, it's not something that this government is doing new, but I think, uh, you know, the reduction in the deficit or the projected reduction in the deficit is somewhat uh, tenuous at best once, once one looks behind the numbers. So I think that uh, in that sense, uh, you know, India's, uh, uh, you know, uh, growth is clearly been disappointing in the last few years, and no amount of restating GDP numbers is going to change that. Uh, and we look for the, you know, for the data coming out from, uh, industry to judge whether or not the economy is improving, uh, not official statistics being published by the government. All right. Uh, we have Teresa Bajar also joining us now, co-founder and CEO of Kartika Management. Uh, Teresa, good morning. Thanks a lot for joining us on this big day. Uh, you know, uh, the, the Indian market has underperformed this year. Part of the reason is that this is election year. Uh, uh, in that sense, you think uh, that there's anything that the budget could change or uh, you reckon underperformance could continue? Um, well, I'm not sure that the budget is really the big event, unless there's a surprise um, and we get uh, talk of um, uh, a uh, minimum support payment or something that uh, is sort of out of the ordinary. But I agree with your last speaker that uh, this is really an interim budget um, for when the, and the new government uh, when they come in, that will be the real story. Um, so I'm not sure that this has a lot of market-making potential. Uh, sure. Teresa, hi. Good morning. Uh, so if the fiscal deficit targets are not met and a farm package is announced, in all likelihood it will be, uh, will that not deter you from making fresh investments into the Indian markets? Um, Probably not. It depends. I mean, if the 3.3% uh, fiscal deficit is more or less met, that will, I think, uh, be reasonable for us. Um, what we like about India is over the next three to five years, uh, we see themes in India that are much more dramatic than we see in any other emerging market. Um, and the biggest of those themes is formalization, which has obviously had its hiccups, and we see that in our own companies. But over the next three to five years, um, I think it will be uh, enormously market moving. Um, and then if GDP print continues, we will see premiumization, which seems to have taken a little bit of a break the last few months, but I don't see that as a structural matter. Um, and then we have millennialization. Uh, India is completely remarkable in that 45% of the workforce is between the ages of 18 and 35, and they control 70% of household income. So they are richer than their parents. There's no country on earth where this is true. And uh, that has a lot of implications for uh, what one will invest in and also for the investability of India over the long term. We are not day-to-day -day traders. We are long-term investors. Now, I, I take your point entirely, Teresa, that there is an underlying uh, longer-term story that investors like you will uh, watch out for. But nevertheless, what are you looking for from the budget? Um, actually, we, were, we would just like to see some stability. Uh, we know there are going to have to be some goodies in there for re-election. We're completely resigned to that. Uh, but what we're looking for is something that, that uh, doesn't blow out that, you know, something less than, than 3.5%, preferably 3.3% uh, fiscal deficit as a percent of GDP. Uh, Arvind, in terms of sectors, uh, the two main sectors that everyone's going to focus on is the farm oriented stocks as well as the consumption stocks, you know, if there's a basic income package given or this farm package that we're talking about. Um, do you think it's just going to be a sentiment rally in these names or as an investor, would you buy into any of these rural focus names now? 
I think at this stage it becomes more of a short-term sentiment rally rather than anything structural because this is going to be a very short-term stop. So it's hard to, you know, uh, make an investment decision. Again, we're also making, you know, uh, uh, two, three, four-year views, not uh, two, three-month views. And therefore, you might get, you know, uh, a little bit of help in the short term. I think the question is, you know, whether it is, uh, 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 you know, low-income housing or other things that can be more structural in nature where the government continues to expand the support that it's providing. Uh, if those are structural, those would be areas that we'd be looking at. Uh, you know, the increasing minimum support price or universal basic income, uh, you know, uh, may be helpful, but, uh, but uh, I'm not sure how much uh, we can count on any of these uh, being long-term and, and durable and, and, and uh, spendable. But I, I do believe, and we believe for a few months now, that the you know rural sector has suffered quite a bit in the last few years, partly because of fiscal discipline by this government. And I think it looks like going forward, there's likely to be more rural support. So overall, we've been uh, you know looking at uh, companies that benefit from that. Uh, I don't think the budget will dramatically change our view on some of the stocks that we like that have exposure to uh, a little bit more of a rural story. All right. Uh, Arvind, pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for staying up for us. And don't worry, we will post you uh, a synopsis of the budget uh, before you're up tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. uh, Teresa, just a final question to you. And similar to what uh, we asked uh, Arvind, uh, you know, uh, while uh, India seems to have consumed uh, enough pizzas and soaps, if you go by the Hindustan Unilever numbers and uh, the Jubilant Food Works numbers, uh, you know, this farm package is primarily something that will put more money in the hands of uh, people who will, who will rush to consume. So are you looking at the consumption stocks or the valuations deter you? Will you prefer going to the IT stocks, which seem to be showing very good volume growth this year? What's your pecking order in terms of stocks or sectors? Um, well, we like the consumer space, and um, I think you're right. Um, when poorer people get money, they tend to consume it, not save it. Um, but I do agree. We've seen this movie before where rural GDP was growing faster than urban GDP in uh, uh, 2009, for example. Uh, but it's not sustainable because every country in the world over, GDP is created in cities. Um, and so... I, for me, that's a trade rather than a long-term story, but I do see the consumer in India as a long-term story. Um, I think the IT sectors um, are you know, a shining example of uh, Indian industry, industriousness, but um, I, there are a lot of uh, disruptors and competitors long-term to that to that industry which we don't see in the consumption story that uh, uh, having a huge base of consumers in India as a major driver of the GDP growth I think is here to stay for a long time okay, okay. Uh, Teresa well thank you for joining us and giving us your view so that's the word coming in from the foreign investor no this budget does not uh, matter as far as the foreign investors decision to invest into India is concerned uh, the fine print of course is another thing let's take a short break on that note but still ahead the flows of um, the flow of the top global opinion continues so we're gonna get a, a quick handle on what's happening with cities Mohammed Appabai and Hugh Young of Aberdeen Asset Management they'll be with us in just moments from now